Okay, Brad, so we're not that happy with complete response as the first or main clinical outcome in clinical trials. What would be the ideal outcome for clinical trials in the future? So th this is about the hardest question uh, ever. Um, you know, if we, if we look back on all, one, one of the major reasons that we haven't had therapies really develop for many of our kidney diseases is we waited to see end-stage kidney disease and no one can wait that long because it takes too long. And uh, so we need a surrogate marker. Uh, and I think that um, what, well, there's several things I think we, we, we need to do, but I, as you well know, am really enamored with the idea of histologic remission. Because when we have a absence of inflammatory components in the kidney, we know there may be scar, but if we can stop additional scar formation, then we preserve the kidney. Now, the problem, of course, as you well know, is we don't want to continue to do repeat biopsies on patients uh, to define the histologic outcome. So for me, ideally, going into the, the future, we would have very good panel of surrogate biomarkers that are telling us in real time what's happening at the level of the kidney. Now, I realize this is an autoimmune disease, and we've discussed this before. We certainly want to get the autoimmune disease under control, and we also have serologic biomarkers that, that exist. Um, but I honestly don't think they're very good. I have plenty of patients, and I'm sure you do too, with lupus nephritis who have gone into sustained remission, minimal medication other than an antimalarial, going forward in time with positive double-stranded DNAs that never, ever go away. So double-stranded DNA is not the answer. Same sort of thing with complement. So we need biomarkers to me that measure autoimmunity that's relevant to the kidney and relative to the systemic disease that really track well with true disease activity. And then we also need biomarkers, I think, specifically of kidney histology uh, so that we can understand how our therapies are impacting the kidney now, rather than at one point in time with a biopsy that could then change a month later. Okay, so I understand that at present, we need kidney biopsy as the ideal outcome of a clinical trial, but we cannot do biopsies forever. So what's coming next? Do we have any exciting biomarker in line? So to me, the most exciting biomarker we have is what you and I worked on together <laughs> when you were in the lab. And honestly, um, What's remarkable about urine CD163, uh, which is a, um, a soluble urine CD163, it's easily detectable by an ordinary ELISA in the urine. It comes uh, presumably from M2 macrophages that infiltrate the kidney during uh, lupus nephritis. But what I really like about it, Juan, is that it has been replicated in so many other cohorts. So clearly our cohort in the United States, and then we validated that with your cohort from Mexico. Um, so we had a lot of diversity, race and ethnicity. And then of course, many European cohorts and another cohort in the United States. Um, and I think Asian cohorts as well, if I remember correctly. Uh, so this has been replicated. And so this to me, um, is robust. Uh, so, but you know that. What do you think about our recent sort of analysis of the data? Well, that's a good one. I, I want to add that there are single cell analysis showing that the most abundant cell infiltrating the kidneys in lupus nephritis are the CD163 expressing cells. Exactly. So that goes in line with this. And yes, of course, we now have an abstract. And <laughs> this has, has a good diagnostic yield for defining remission from an histological standard of care. So, yeah, it looks a good biomarker heading into the future, isn't it?
Juan and I have been working together on biomarkers and the, the reanalysis of the data um, was just fabulous to distinguish between an activity index of zero and an activity index of anything else. So if we define true histologic remission as no activity in the kidney, which is really the safest way to define it, we can say, okay, maybe if we got down to an activity index of one, it might be okay, but we don't know that. Um, the results were, were, were fabulous, and I will hopefully be able to present that uh, this year at the kidney meetings, but um, this gives me the first real indication that we can distinguish in a non-invasive fashion when there is no more activity in the kidney. And it's irrelevant of what the proteinuria is, which is really important.